So in this video, we are going to look at how we are going to analyze data uh, within a con uh, the context of a controlled experiment. And in the prior video, we were talking about designing an experiment to test if magnesium, uh, the effects of magnesium level on the growth of uh, corn plants, uh, like the ones you see in this picture here. And we uh, went over the idea that when you're going to test uh, this idea in a controlled experiment, you're going to need to repeat that test because there's natural variation uh, that we see when we're looking at, uh, at things in nature, in this case, uh, the corn plant. They're not all going to grow to the same height, so there's this natural variation. So we can expect that when we test magnesium, that we're going to need to test it more than once, and that means you're going to need replicates. So uh, and in a controlled experiment, you're going to need a controlled experiment, uh, a control group where you have several replicates uh, that you that you are giving the controlled conditions to, and then the experimental one where you're treating it with that variable. In this case, a different level of magnesium, and with those replicates, um, that's going to allow you to calculate the average or the mean for each group. Now. There's going to be variation in both groups, and you're going to be looking specifically at the mean, but there's one thing that is going to be true uh, regardless, is that if you ran that experiment a hundred different times, and each time you had a control group with replicates and experimental with replicates, you're never going to get exactly the, the same mean every time you run the means, every time you run the experiment. And the means between the groups are always going to be different. And so now uh, we need a way of uh, figuring out just how different the, they are. And it starts with considering the variation that you're going to get in the sample uh, in, within, your, within your groups. So you're going to have, you're going to end up with a mean for one group and a mean for the other group. Uh, and within those groups, there's going to be a certain amount of variation. So in order to really compare the means, we need to consider that variation. So this video is about uh, what you do to consider that variation within the groups. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to go over that, uh, that the mechanics of doing that, but I also want to make sure that we have an understanding as to what it means when you do it. And so, uh, looking at the context of another experiment, um, uh, just to get an idea, this can be this is done uh, in other contexts besides the corn plant experiment. This is uh, uh, one of the 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 exercise that I want y'all to do as part of uh, this uh, lab uh, for for the scientific methods, uh, and it's downloadable. And this one here it goes through how to write hypothesis, or it asks you to write hypothesis and so on, and then it gives you uh, another type of experiment in which they're looking at tadpoles, which are the larval frog, the larval stage of frogs. And in this experiment, they're looking at giving them different types of food. In one case, they're giving a, a, a group of tadpoles boiled lettuce. Uh, I kind of cut it off there, but it says boiled lettuce here. And then they're going to give another group a meat-based diet, more higher in protein and fat content. And so these are your two groups. One is lettuce, the other is meat-based. Now, in real life, most tadpoles are herbivorous. In most cases, that's not always true, but in most cases, your tadpoles are herbivorous, so that would probably make this the control situation. And then giving them a meat-based diet would be your treatment, which we can also call our experimental group. Okay, And you can see here that they didn't just test one tadpole because of natural variation. They tested their growth with replicates. So it looks like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They had eight replicates and then they had eight replicates here. Uh, and what they did was they fed them uh, these tadpoles over a period of time, the boiled lettuce, the other group, the, the meat-based diet, and then they took their weights as a measure of growth. And so now you have two groups and the way the easiest way to compare this would be to calculate the averages for each one. So we're going to want to calculate the mean for each one, but you can see just looking at the numbers, they're variable. And so this video is about how we handle that variation. And then we're going to use that to determine if the groups are really different or not, because the means are going to be different regardless. And remember, we don't really know what the true mean would be because we cannot test every possible tadpole on the planet to figure out what the real mean is. So we're, we're working with 
a sample or a subset of, of the tadpoles. Now, keep in mind, remember, everything else needs to be constant, right? This better be the same species of frog, for example. They need to be in the same temperature, uh, the same light levels. Everything needs to be constant except what you're giving them. Now, uh, I'm not going to calculate the mean and uh, the quantity that you're going to use to uh, measure the variation. That's what we're doing today or in this video is to uh, give a measurement for the overall variation that you see in the sample here. I'm going to let you do that. This is for your independent practice. That's why that's an, uh, a suggested assignment that you do. So that handout is part of uh, the assignments or exercises you do for practice. So make sure you download that one and you do that one for yourself and get help if you need to. But I'm going to go over how to do that. And so in order to handle that natural variation that we're going to see, we're going to work with a small data set. And this is within the context of that yeast growth example where they were being given different uh, nutrients and then producing carbon dioxide. But the, the technique is still the same. The average is still calculated the same. You're going to have a set of values and then you're going to have to calculate their averages. And then from there, we're going to calculate in order to handle that variation, which I was talking about, you're going to have to calculate something called a standard deviation. And that's what this video is about. Okay, so uh, that would be done in the case of the frog experiment here. You would have to calculate the average and then the standard deviation for both groups. You do them as separate, a separate mean and standard deviation for that group and then one for the other group. We're just going to go over, though, how to calculate the mean and standard deviation for just one small data set. But what we do here would be done for both of those data sets. Okay? Now, um, here we only have four replicates instead of the eight from there. And uh, when you design your own experiment, uh, a plant growth experiment, which is going to be uh, something that's going to be graded and an actual graded assignment, uh, you're going to have to figure out how many replicates you're going to want to do and what is the difference in your control in your experimental group. Uh, but for now, let's learn how to analyze that data you'll eventually collect. So the first thing you're going to want to do to calculate the average, and so this is just one group. We're not doing it for a control experimental. We're just going over how you calculate the mean and the standard deviation. The one thing you're going to need, one of the things you're going to need to do to calculate the mean is to know uh, what's called the sum, and the sum is symbolized by the Greek letter mu. You're also going to need to know the number of replicates, and sometimes they call that the sample size. In this case, the number of replicates is four. Okay. Now, if we do the sum here, uh, let's see, that's nine and eight, that's 17, 18, 19, 20, so that's 20 carry two, uh, two, three, four, five, six, uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's 80. So the sum is 80, and the units are millimeters of carbon dioxide they collected in a, in a column or a tube. So that's 80, and there's four of them. So you know how you calculate the average? The, the mean is the same as the average. And the symbol for mean is going to be X bar. So mean is the average, and we're going to symbolize it as uh, X bar. And to calculate the mean, you're going to have to get the sum, this mean, the bar means mean and of the variable x, you're going to have to get the sum of the x values. And then you're going to divide by the number of replicates or your sample size. So basically that's saying uh, this is the sum of x down here, okay, this is the bottom of that column, these are your individual x values. That's your sum of x and you're going to divide by 4. So it's just like calculating an average. So we're going to substitute in there the sum, 80, and you're going to divide by 4. And when you do that, you're going to get an answer of 20, and it would actually have units of millimeters. So our mean, which is x bar, ends up being 20. And technically, when you calculate a mean, you should give it one more number place than the, the most precise value that you see here. And here they're calculating all of these, or they, they were measured all, not calculated, they were measured during the experiment to the nearest one. So we add one extra number place, 0 0.0. Sometimes when you divide, you're going to get a lot of decimals. Well, where do you round? You always round to one extra number place when you report a mean. That's appropriate. Okay. Now, from the mean, the, the mean is going to be necessary step in calculating the standard deviation. So this is your concept equation for calculating the mean. It's calculating the average. We've been doing that forever, like when we calculate average for 
your quiz grades, for example. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to set up a table in our uh, approach to calculating the standard deviation. Okay. Now, what is a deviation to begin with? The deviation is a measure of how far off an individual value is from the mean. Let's say that we made a measurement. One of the replicates ended up being 20. So we only have four here, but let's say we took a fifth one and it was exactly 20, and the mean is 20. Well, there's no deviation from there. That value is exactly 20. But these other values have some deviation from that mean. There's some difference. So in order to calculate that, there's a formula. Okay. You're going to take that individual value, okay, and that individual value, you're going to subtract the mean, okay? Uh, and if you, uh, if you think about this, you can get positive and negative values. If your individual value, sometimes they symbolize that as xi, so these are xi's, here your, your value, individual value. If your individual value is higher than the mean, then you're going to get a positive value. If your individual value, when you plug it in there, is smaller than the mean, then you get a negative value. So in this case here in the first one, remember, keep in mind your mean is here. In your lab manual, they have an extra column, and they put the mean, and they write it all the way down. So they would write 20 all the way down here. But in this case here, in order to get that, you're going to subtract, right? So you're going to take 22, and you're going to subtract the mean, because this is your individual value, and that's your mean. And when you do, you're going to get a positive 2, okay? or 2.0. In this one here, 19 minus the 20, 0, and that's going to give you a value of, uh, this one's going to be negative, so it's going to be negative 1. And then we go on and continue. So basically what we're doing in this column is we're calculating the deviation for each of the individual values. In other words, this column right here, the second one, is telling us what the deviation is for the individual values from the mean. How far off are they from the mean? This next one here is negative 2. And then the last one, when we subtract the mean, is a plus 1. Okay, so these are the deviations for this particular uh, data set. Now, it would be great, though, if we can come up with an average deviation, like on average how deviant were the values. The problem with that is that the average or the mean is the central value between your high values and your low values. And what that really translates into is that these deviations, some are going to be above and some are going to be below, like the negative ones. Those deviations actually balance out where the average value is. And in the context of deviation, the middle would be zero, because if you have no deviation, you're 20. Okay. How far is the first value from 20 plus 2? How far is the, the third value down here on the list? It's minus 2. Those two balance each other out around zero if you're right on the mean. They cancel each other out. Look at the second value. Compare the second value and the fourth one. The, the second value is negative 1 from the mean, and the last one is positive 1. So all of these values balance each other out. The same thing here. If we were to plot all of these on a number line and then put the mean uh, also on that number line, then we're going to see those values balance around the mean. And that's my point here is, is if we were to sum this column up here, they all cancel out and give you a value of zero. So there's no way you can calculate a mean deviation because the sum is zero. And if we were to plug the sum of the deviations on the top, you're going to get zero and divide by four and zero divided by four is zero. There's no mean. You're never going to get, you won't get a number. So that does not make sense to do that. So there's a way around this. And the way around this is to take that deviation that we were calculating and square it. So you're going to take the same thing, what you did in the first column, the individual values, you're going to subtract the mean from it, and then you're going to square that quantity. Okay? Uh, and basically, you already did what's in the parentheses. So that's the formula. You take uh, the individual value, subtract the mean, and then you're going to take that quantity and you square it. In other words, you're going to take the answer here, which you got, which is 2, and you're going to square it. So what is 2 squared? The answer is 4. And the reason we're doing this is because when you square a negative, you get a positive. So if we were to square negative 1, negative 1 times negative 1 is plus 1. Negative 2 times negative 2 is a plus 4. And 1 times 1 is 1. So keep in mind, so what is this deviation square? It's just taking the answer from the first column for each value 
each individual value down the list and squaring it. Another way to represent that is x, the individual x value minus the mean quantity squared, and that's what you get in this column. Now, when you do that and you add up this column here, you're not, they're not going to cancel out. So 4 plus 1 is 5, uh, plus 4 is 9, plus 1, that's 10. That gives you a value of 10. And what we've just calculated here is called the sum of the squared deviations. Okay, So the sum of the squared deviations. That's that answer. So basically, this is an important number here. We can now get an average for that, okay? Or it's possible to get an average for that, okay? So the problem here is that if we got an average for this value here, okay, it's squared. We've squared this value here. Whenever you subtract apples minus apples or millimeters minus millimeters, because this mean is in millimeters, the units here are millimeters. So this unit's for... The deviation is millimeters, but when you square 2 millimeters times 2 millimeters, the actual units here are millimeters squared, and that doesn't make sense. So if we were to calculate an average based on this, your answer is going to be in millimeters squared, and that doesn't match the mean. Okay. So how do you cancel out a squaring? You take the square root. So the next part is going to be having to take the square root. Now, if everything I'm saying right now is like, wow, that's just, uh, you know, squaring this and squaring that, just remember to use the table. The table will guide you to this calculation right here. So we've calculated the sum of the square uh, deviations. That's what this column is. It's called the sum of the square deviations. And if you think about it, that bottom answer right there, you're taking the sum, but it's not the sum of the individual values. It's not the sum of the deviations. It's the sum of the square deviations. And the sum of the square deviations, the individual ones, is represented by this formula. That's what this column is. This column is the sum of those deviations, and then you square it. So we took the deviation for each value. Your deviation was 2. And then you square it, and that gives you this individual value. So all of these are the, the square deviations, and the bottom is the sum of those square deviations. So if you think about what this formula is saying, it's saying sum each one of those values. So in fancy mathematical uh, writing, that's what this answer is on the bottom. It's the sum of these square deviations. So if you were to cover up that, uh, that symbol there, this sigma here, this is a square deviation. That's what this column is. That's a square deviation. That's a square deviation. Oops, I erased it there on accident. And then when we put this here, that means sum them up. That means get the, get the total on the bottom. Now, if we're going to get the average of the square deviations, we would simply take and divide by the number. There's four of them. And that would give you your value. However, there is a reason for this, and you're just going to have to follow it in practice. You're not going to divide by n in this case. You're going to divide by n minus 1. And this is going to give you a value that's called, if you according to what's, how it's found in your lab manual. We can skip right to calculating the standard deviation, but they first calculate something called the variance. Okay? And the variance sometimes is symbolized as s squared. So S squared means variance. Okay, so if we were to do this together right now in practice, we've already calculated that bottom value. That's your sum of the squares, a deviation. Sometimes it's called sum of squares for uh, for short. So sum of square deviations, the abbreviated is SSD uh, in some statistics books. Uh, but it's the sum of the square deviations. So we've already done that. The table did it for you. That's 10, so you're going to plug it in there. And instead of dividing by 4, and the reasons I can't go into right now is called degrees of freedom. Uh, now remember, when you calculate the mean, it's you divide by n, but when you're going to calculate the variance, you calculate n minus 1. In this case, 4 minus 1, that gives you 3. And so why is it 3? Because it was 4 here, and you subtract from that. And when you do this, you're going to get an answer. 10 divided by 3 is positively 3.333. Uh, and it keeps going, right? You're going to round it at some point, but for now, you can keep that in your calculator. Now, guys, in order to get 
back to millimeters because this answer is going to be millimeter squared. What do you do? You take the square root. So if we were to take the square root of the variance, which is that answer here, then that means we would have to take the square root of the calculation we just did. All of that. Okay, so that means take the square root of all of that quantity. If we take the square root of that, then we have to take the square root of that. And if we do, that's equal to S. And S stands for your standard deviation. So all we have to do now is take the square root of the answer we just got, which is 3.3333. And when you do that, um, let's see, 1 times 1 is 1, and 2 times 2 is 4. So it's going to end up being like 1 point something. But I have my calculator here. It's going to be like 1.825748, but remember earlier I was saying we're going to round over here to, we're going to keep that same level of precision for now. And so I'm going to round, this is 1.825, whatever, so we're going to round to the tenth place, so the standard deviation would be 1.8. So this is the answer we were trying to get, and we used this table to get it. So when you go back to that handout here, that's what you would be doing here for each data set. Here's your column for your deviation, which is x minus, uh, I'm sorry, the individual value minus the mean. And then here it's whatever you got in this column, which was the individual value minus the individual value minus the mean, and you squared it, okay, that individual value. So basically you square what was in this column and you get your square deviation. Then at the bottom you total it, that gives you your sum of your square deviations, and then you divide by n minus 1 to give you your variance, and then you take the square root of that answer to get your standard deviation. So they kind of already set up the table for you here to get you to calculate the mean and standard deviation, and you should practice it because you're going to be tested on that uh, during your lab exam. Okay, so you're doing this to get the practice and figure out if you know how to do it and get help if you don't and to go through that practice. You also have to be doing it for your little uh, experimental research project that you're going to be doing uh, there at home. Uh, but there's that's the deal. And so how, you'd rep how would you represent this? Uh, say you were going to report it uh, in the middle of a sentence in, a scientific, in, a, in your lab report or in a scientific report. You're going to report it as the mean plus or minus your standard deviation, which is S. So in this case, for this data set here, what what are your, and we call these descriptive statistics. The first is the mean, and the second standard deviation is a measure of how variable the values were. So your mean would be 20.0. That was what we got in our first calculation over here. Okay. Plus or minus the standard deviation, which is 1.8. And then you put the units at the end. So what is what was the results here? Well, we got a mean uh, a plus or minus one standard deviation of 20.0 plus or minus 1.8 millimeters for this. Now, a couple of things to consider here. Okay, you did this for one group. You're going to have to do this for your own experiment. Okay, you also have at least one more group. That's why it's an experiment. You have your experimental group and your control group. Okay. Once you've calculated these, then we need to consider how do we determine if these means are actually different or not. It turns out it's related to not just the mean, but it's also related to that standard deviation. And we'll go over how to do that. But I wanted you to consider one other thing here. It is possible, it would have been possible in this case here, that we could have gotten... An, uh, an answer could have been, uh, or a, a measurement could have been 24. And notice I put that exactly two uh, units higher. And it's possible that this one could be 16. Okay. And if I did that, guess what? I, I made this one two points higher and this one two points lower. You know what? When you add those up, you're still going to get 80. You're still going to divide by four. And you're still going to end up getting a mean of 20, but what is, what's going to happen to the deviations, right? Take a look here. 24, the, the main would still be 20. Trust me, it will be, because I added 2 to 1 and took 2 away from the other, so my sum is still going to be the same. What's going to happen here in that case is this would not be 2 anymore. This would be 4, okay, in that adjustment, 
right? Like I cross this out, I cross that out. That would be four. This is still gonna be negative one. This one is now gonna be negative two, now it's gonna be negative four. And this one, because I didn't change it, is still gonna be one. Now, overall, those that still adds to zero, okay? But what does that do to the deviation squared? What's four times four? That would give me 16. This is still gonna be one. This is gonna be 16 and this is still gonna be one. Now, what happens to my sum of square deviations? That's now higher, it's 32, 33, 34. This would be 34. 34 would go in here now. And 34 divided by three is gonna give me a higher number than what we got here. And that means you would get a higher standard deviation. So what's my point here is the more variable your data is, the bigger the standard deviation. And so now you would see now how standard deviation measures variation. If the data is more variable, you're going to get a bigger standard deviation number. If the data is less variable, you're going to get a smaller standard deviation. That number would be smaller. So the amount of variation is going to matter. So make sure you understand that concept because when I give you some data sets and I just give you the actual values here, like 20.18 and then let's say I give you another one, 20.0 uh, plus or minus or I tell you that it's standard deviation, I just tell you the standard deviation is 3.5. You can tell that uh, while the means are the same, this one has more variable individual values because the standard deviation is greater. Uh, the same would be true if uh, if I told you the value is 40. Why did it do that? If the value is 40.2 and my standard deviation is 2.3, this data set has less variation than the one above. The means are different, but the standard deviations, the standard deviation is higher in this data set here. Okay. And this one has more variation than this one here. So be able to interpret the standard deviation even without seeing the original data set. Okay. So that's how you calculate standard deviation, and there's a reason for it. It's to be able to measure that variation that we're going to get in our samples. And uh, the idea is when we're going to compare our experimental groups, we don't know what the real means are, so uh, it helps to understand the variation in each one when we go to compare the means in, in a controlled experiment. So that's uh, make sure you practice doing this skill for, for both exam purposes and plus you're going to need to be able to do this with the data you collect in your experiment.